You guys, MEPS day one is in the books. Let's talk about it. So I'm currently at my hotel at MEPS right now and I do not have a tripod with me. So this is the angle that we're going with today. I just have it stacked against my ASVAB book on the desk. My day actually went really, really well. So let's just start from the very beginning of the day and we will walk through it. So I woke up at about 7.30 this morning just to make sure I had all my stuff ready. So today is the actual day that I am leaving and here is backpack. It is so full, a lot fuller than I was expecting and wanted it to be, but I had my beats clipped off of here, but they were really big. So I actually just switched for the AirPods because they were way too bulky and I don't really need them that bad. Then I have my ASVAB study guide in here. That is the main reason that this is so full is because there wasn't much room for that, but I want to be able to study on uh, the shuttle up there today. And then I had to go to my recruiter's office. MEPS day one, I am currently at my recruiter's office. It is 10 a.m. and we are just getting the day started. That way we could just make sure everything is ready to go before I take the shuttle up to MEPS. So I'm joining out of Huntsville, Alabama and my MEPS location is in Nashville, Tennessee. So I got to my recruiter's office about 10 o'clock and then we had plenty of time because the shuttle was supposed to get there at about 11.30 to go over forms and make sure everything was good to go. There were some forms that I had to go through and sign talking about um, who your beneficiary is going to be and if anything were to happen who would be in charge of your funeral. So for me, my options were my spouse or one of my parents, and I just put my spouse for everything. And then if you guys have not watched my background check video, watch that video because it is just so much. And I had to add some stuff to that. Brief rundown, basically any reference you have to use on there, you have to have like a different person for each thing whether it be a different place that you lived or a different job. You have to have references for all of that and it's really annoying. So I had to add three more references to that today because I guess I had had some duplicates on there. We finished up with everything and then I actually had a little bit of time so I went and grabbed some McDonald's real quick. So the shuttle got there about 11.50 and I was actually the only Air Force recruit going from our office today. And then there were two, either Navy or Army, I'm not sure which branch those guys were. And then there were three Marines. So then we had about two hour drive up to Nashville. I took my ASVAB book and I just kind of studied and I think I fell asleep a few times uh, along the way. Nobody really talked to anybody. The three Marine people were kind of talking to each other. And then I said a few things to the other two guys, but no one really talked. So it was a, it was a pretty quiet ride, which I didn't mind because I was trying to study anyway, but a tip that I actually have for you guys is to study beforehand, which I had also done, but do not bring your thick ASVAB study book. It's way too bulky. You don't need to bring a lot and it's just really inconvenient to have in my bag. As long as you study beforehand, give yourself like hopefully multiple weeks to study. That way you don't have to feel like you have to cram at the last minute because not bringing it with you is just gonna make your life so much easier. Then we arrived at the hotel at 1.50 and when you first come in, you are gonna go to a briefing room. At least that's what we did. I think it'd probably be about the same process everywhere. So you go into your hotel, you go into a briefing room. Right now it is January 14th, 2021. So it's still during COVID times right now. So we all of course have to wear masks. You had to wear a mask the whole shuttle ride. You have to wear a mask when you're basically outside of your hotel room, you have to have a mask on the whole time. And stay tuned for a story later. We go to a briefing room and we have to fill out COVID forms. They take your temperature. Day one is the day where people do testing. So if you are somebody who has been to MEPS before, you probably aren't gonna be watching this video. Those people will go to the briefing room as well. And then from there, if you've been to MEPS before and basically you're just here for the medical day on day two, I think you just hang out the rest of the day and then the other people go to testing. So that's what happened for us. So the three of us that had to go to testing got in line first and did our COVID forms, the temperature. We got back on the shuttle and the driver took us over to the MEPS site. Now, do not feel bad 
if you did not realize that MEPS and the hotel were two different places. Because I actually used to think that MEPS was at a hotel. Because anytime I watched videos, everyone talks about MEPS and then they're like, we went to the hotel and then they talk about other stuff they did, like they went to testing or they did their medical evaluations. But then it's like, and then I was in the hotel. So I always thought literally until just a few weeks ago. I think they're usually all at hotels. It's not at a hotel. They're just having you stay at a hotel. Oh, hotel. I did not realize Army this. National Guard unit I just thought it was at a hotel. I thought that MEPS was at a hotel. So I thought there was like an event area at the hotel and that they just use that area for recruits to go through all their evaluations and stuff. Those of you who already understand this are probably like, You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. But I did not know because no one has ever really explained that there's like a difference in the two. So MEPS is the Military Entrance Processing Station. That is a location all in itself, just a specific building that they use to enlist new recruits, but that's its own place. But then when you go to MEPS, you also stay at a hotel, but then you take a shuttle to and from whenever you have to go to MEPS. So basically day one, you come up, you check in at the hotel, they shuttle you over to MEPS for testing, and then they shuttle you back for the night. The next morning, they shuttle you over and you do your medical evaluations all day and then you leave. So that is another reason why you don't wanna pack a ton of stuff in your bag, pack as minimal as possible. I even thought I was packing super minimally and I still think that I brought more than I need, like my ASVAB book, for example. And then I brought some PJs. That's not taking up a whole lot of room, but like I have a room by myself so that part doesn't really matter. I could have just worn the tank top that I have on under this. Just really anything you can do to not bring out a bunch of stuff because you got to carry that around with you for a little bit at least. Um, and me, I wore a pair of shoes today and I brought a different pair for tomorrow. If you can get away with just wearing the same pair both days, just do that. Basically, I wore skinny jeans today, which are allowed. You definitely want to wear jeans. I would suggest that's what my recruiter told me to wear and everyone here basically is wearing jeans. You don't want to wear leggings or um, jeans with holes in them or rips or frayed at the bottom at all. But my jeans do not, they're just skinny jeans. So I just wore like a little booty today. And then tomorrow I have flare jeans. So I'm wearing tennis shoes, but honestly wearing those flare jeans with my tennis shoes today and tomorrow would have been just fine. Another thing is make sure your jeans have a pocket in the front. Most people do, but girls, sometimes we have real short pockets where nothing will fit in them. You wanna make sure you have a deep pocket on your jeans because you're gonna have to keep your social security card and your ID handy and you can't carry around anything else with you so you don't have a bag to put it in or a binder or anything like that. So you really just need to keep it in your pocket because we can't have anything else. And you don't just wanna carry it in your hand because it's easy to set it down and forget it. So jeans with pockets pack lightly. That's our tips so far. Moving on. After the briefing at the hotel, they're going to shuttle you over to the MEPS site if you are doing testing, which of course I had to do today. So you go into the site and there is security right away and then you go through a metal detector if you have any bags or anything, which most people will. I actually just got lucky in this instance. So you'll put literally everything on the conveyor belt so that way they can scan it and then you'll go through the metal detector and then you'll get your stuff and they have a big, it's almost like, I don't know whether to say a room or a closet. I would say more so a room, but it has a bunch of cubbies in it and that is where you'll put all of your stuff because like I said, you're not gonna carry anything around with you besides the papers that you have to check in with your driver's license and social. So I got really lucky when we were at the briefing at the hotel cause I was, the last person to walk out of the room that was going to testing and I had like my backpack and then I had a bag of snacks and I had oh, oh yeah my ASVAB study guide was out as well and because it's just way too bulky and I couldn't fit it back into my backpack after taking it out so that was really annoying so I was a mess like this and he's like you can just set that stuff here if you want that way you don't have to take it all through security later and I was like oh <gasps> you so I sat it in that room because he was going to be in there the whole time 
And then whenever we got off the shuttle at the MEP site, the other two guys who were going to testing, they both had their duffel bags and they asked the driver like, hey, can we leave these on here? And he's like, no, cause I'm going to go pick up other people and you'll be getting picked up by someone else later. So I was able to just walk in with my folder of my papers and I didn't have to carry anything in. So that made it so nice, but tomorrow, I'm gonna have to do that, but I'm gonna have everything packed already. So once you're through security, you put your stuff in the closet room, you're gonna take your papers to check in with the branch that you are joining. So I go to the Air Force room and this guy just looks over my paper. That was like the request for examination for the ASVAB. And then also looks at my birth certificate and social and my COVID forms. And then after he looked at that, I had to go back over to like the middle, like the lobby area where like a main desk is, I guess you would call it and check in there. And they're gonna take a fingerprint. After that, I went and sat in a specific area designated for people taking the ASVAB. So you basically you wait until it's your turn and then they'll go over your papers and then they'll let you go in and give you a computer. But I was so worried because years ago, whenever I was talking to a recruiter before, this literally was like, eight years ago. I was talking to a recruiter before and I had to drive over two hours. I drove this by myself to over two hours to go to the area to take my ASVAB. I get there and I'm like wandering around and then like a guy opens the door. I'm like, hey, I'm supposed to be here to take the ASVAB. And he's like, our computers are down. Your recruiter didn't tell you that. And I'm like, no. And he's like, I'm sorry. You have a terrible recruiter. I'm like, Thank you. Yeah. So that was my experience with that, which sucked. So then today with the system being down and then I sat over there and was like waiting for them to call my name to take the ASVAB. And I heard him talking about the system being down and I'm like, do not do this to me again. Do not let this happen again. Thankfully it did not. And I was able to take the ASVAB. So they had a row of chairs and then we were just sitting like every other one while we were waiting and then a guy will come out of the um, room and he'll take your papers, look over them, get a computer set up with your name and social on there so it is like linked to your account. Then he'll call you in. They have plexiglass barriers between every single computer and then every time somebody's done, they spray down everything with disinfectant and they wipe the keyboard, the mouse, the computer, the chair, the desk, everything. And of course, we're supposed to keep our masks on. I was feeling pretty confident about it. I wasn't thinking I was doing like amazing, but I, I thought I was doing pretty, pretty good. <laughs> What even levels are those? I feel like I need to make another video later talking about studying for the ASVAB. I think I'll do that. There's 11 sections that you have to take your test for. Only four sections go towards your AFQT, which is like your overall score. And then there are subset categories that kind of show you if you would be good in like a certain skill set maybe after the ASVAB. If you have not taken your personality test yet, then you'll have to do the personality test. This was seriously the weirdest personality test I've ever taken. And I was trying to remember some of the stuff it said, but now I think I'm just drawing a blank, but I'll try to remember. You answer like 120 some questions, but there are only two options with every single one. And you have to select which one best represents you. And this, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just to figure out personality, I guess, and which jobs you would be better suited for. But it just made no sense at all. Because there would be times where neither of the things on there related to me at all and or didn't even make sense to each other. But regardless, you had to choose which one. Every now and then there would be like a new one thrown in there that I hadn't seen. But then a lot of times like the same things would be on there, but then they would just be with different, they would be paired with different things. What it most boils down to is how you relate to other people or maybe more so if you like like working alone or if you're more of a people person which I'm more of a people person talked about like anger issues and and like being stressed out and learning about new cultures things like that but it was just such weird questions that they didn't even relate okay one example that I can think of right now is one thing might say, my friends say I'm a hard worker. And then the other thing would say, I will not donate to charity unless I'm pressured into it because I don't know where that money's going. 
And then obviously in that instance, I'm gonna click on my friend say I'm a hard worker. Let's just go with the same one where it's like, I'm not gonna donate to charity unless I'm pressured into it because I don't know where that money's going. But then it might be paired with something that's like, I get really angry. And I'm like, I don't want to click either of these because neither of these are me at all. So it was just the most random things. Things that they were paired with made no sense. So you had to try to pick like the better of the two. But there were so many instances where I'm like, I don't want to click any at all. But you had to. Anyway, that's not graded. And I have no clue if you if we find out the results of that or maybe when we talk to like a counselor or liaison at the end of MEPS where they kind of show us where our personality fell into. I have no clue. But after that, you are finished with your testing. Now, some people might be in there to take a full ASVAB. Some people might be in there to take their PICAT validation test. If they had taken their PICAT previously, then when you come to MEPS, you have to take your validation, which there's actually um, one of the Marine guys that was on my shuttle. He took the PICAT yesterday and then he had took his validation today, and then he still had to retake the entire ASVAB, which that is why my recruiter didn't want me to take the PICAT is because you might have to just retake it again anyway. And Josh got a 90, like 92 on his ASVAB, so it's ridiculous that it made him retake it because Surely if he scored that high, he would have gotten his validation answers right. But anyway, he had to retake it. So after you're done taking your ASVAB and personality test, you will go check in with the people that you initially checked in with from your branch. So I would go to the Air Force people, but it was after five o'clock when I was done with mine. So all the Air Force people were actually gone already. It took me about two and a half hours to take all of my tests. So I had to go pick up my phone because after we put the stuff like in the closet, I had still brought my clipboard and a folder and my phone because they didn't tell us to leave that in there. I didn't know like what I needed or not. So when I went to check in with the Air Force people, the guy's like, you can just leave that in here. I'm like, man, I have had such good luck with these people being nice and letting me leave stuff everywhere. But I finished the ASVAB. I couldn't talk to the Air Force people, but I went and got my phone and I was gonna text my recruiter because you can text your recruiter and they can see your score. And my recruiter literally just texted me right before I was getting ready to text him. And he's like, you crushed it and sent me my scores. So this is what the breakdown of my scores were. And I got an 84 as my overall score on the ASVAB. What? Oh my gosh, so crazy. And what is absolutely hilarious is that I scored so well on mechanical and electrical. What? But I am ecstatic that I got an 84. Oh my gosh. So I was so, so, so happy. My day already went pretty well as is. Everybody has been so nice so far. But I know tomorrow is going to be like the main day where it's just like super hectic and people are going to just want people to listen and follow the rules and get through with it. So I'm sure tomorrow will be more of a high stress day. But yeah, me getting an 84 on my ASVAB, of course, was just like the cherry on top. And it was the perfect way to end my night. Ah! And I was so glad I found out soon and that I just did so well. I was confident that I was going to do well on the ASVAB, but I wasn't like 84 confident. So yeah, that's super awesome. Kyle actually predicted what he thought that I was going to get. So I'll throw this clip in of his predictions. This is before I told him what my score was going to be. So here's what Kyle thought. My hair looks absolutely awful. <laughs> I am ready to cut it. But McKenna is taking her ASVAB. I'm recording this. Not sure if it's going in the video, but if so, Hi guys, this is my guess for what McKenna's gonna get. Also, don't mind the mustache missing. Forgot to put a guard on my, my uh, trimmer. Shaved it off, so that's why it looks weird. But McKenna's overall ASVAB score, this is going to be my guess. I am predicting that McKenna's gonna get a 62 overall. And then the breakdown, I am going to guess maintenance or mechanical, 43. Admin or administration, 89. General, 72, electrical, 47. That's my guess. So 
We'll see how accurate I was with this. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. This is just based off of McKenna's practice test that she took and then kind of just how I know her to be, like what she's good with. So I'll be really curious. She's been studying for the ASVAB though. And so that might, you know, influence it a little bit. Yeah, I think she's gonna do overall pretty well, get a 62 on that and then uh, crush the admin and the general portion. And then uh, she's not so much like electrical maintenance oriented. So I'll be curious to see if she scores decent on those. She doesn't want a maintenance job anyway. So it's like, if you don't score good on it, I mean, that's honestly a good thing in a way because then it disqualifies you from a lot of maintenance jobs. I look forward to hearing from her. She should be calling me soon. And then of course, after I get my scores back, I texted him and let him know. He sent me a screenshot of what he guessed it was going to be. So he was really excited and he actually got a 82 on his ASVAB. So ha ha, I beat him. No, we both did. We both did good. So when you are done, you are just gonna hang out and wait for the shuttle to take you back to your hotel. So we got back to the hotel and we went back to the briefing room and the guy in there had some kind of paper. I don't know what it was. And then he asked us for our license and then he had to fill out something. And then we went across the hall to the other briefing room. And that's where we signed in to get our hotel key. So yes, even after all of this, like you, unfortunately don't get your hotel key in the morning that way you can like drop your stuff off and then like go over and do that you have to keep all the stuff with you and you don't get your hotel key until the night time it is 6 p.m and i just walked into my hotel for the night so i like i'm already impressed by this entrance area so i'm just gonna show you guys my hotel right when you walk in you have this sofa chair ottoman seating area TV, little desk. I just threw my stuff down because I literally just walked in. And then a mini fridge, a microwave, a sink, coffee maker. And then you walk into the bedroom area. So I have a room all to myself. Let's see if I can find some lights to turn on. All right, that helps out a little bit. So here is my bed and then TV right over here. Stand up mirror, another desk area and closet actually pretty spacious this is so nice and a bathroom oh that's neat oh oh that's uh, actually a little bit creepy <laughs> but the light underneath that subtle light underneath the mirror um and then okay that's just one light and then this is the bathroom i'm impressed and then they gave us a meal voucher because right now during COVID, you cannot eat at the restaurant downstairs. The restaurant is actually like all the seating is closed down there. They do have seating in the middle of the lobby though. We got our meal voucher and it only had three meals to choose from. So there were chicken tenders and fries, burger and fries, and then a salad. I got chicken tenders and fries. And I am not really a fan of ketchup, but that's the only thing they gave me and the only thing that they had. So I ate my meal. It wasn't terrible because yeah, you can't go wrong with chicken tenders and fries. Um, I talked to Kyle a little bit this evening and now I am so tired and also like excited for tomorrow. A little bit nervous for tomorrow, mostly excited though. Um, normally I am wearing contacts, but I brought my glasses because I just didn't want to deal with taking contacts in and out tomorrow during different tests that you have to do with your vision. So I just figured I'm just gonna take my glasses up so I don't have to worry about contacts and solution and all of that. So that is why I'm wearing my glasses today. But that is how my MEPS day one went. Literally, I don't think it could have gone any better. I was very happy with it. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, you know, leave them down in the comments. And of course, I will keep you updated with how tomorrow goes. I'm gonna get all of my clothes laid out right now and everything that I'm not gonna be using packed in my bag because when we leave our room in the morning, we are not coming back to the hotel. And you go to MEPS and then you get on the shuttle to go back home after that. So you wanna make sure everything is packed. We have to be in the lobby ready to leave at 4.30 in the morning. So I'm gonna go get my bag packed and my shirt ironed and just make sure everything is good to go and get ready for tomorrow. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.